to hit record. Now it's recording. Thank you. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let us pray. Holy One, you call us by name. In this time of reflection, open our hearts to hear that call. Strengthen our hearts to follow. In the name of the one who is the light in the darkness, we pray. Amen. Both stories that we heard today are called call narratives. Call narratives are stories that involve a judge, a prophet, or a disciple being called by God or by Jesus. In the first story, we hear of the little boy Samuel. He serves Eli in the temple, and before bed one night, he hears his name being called. He thinks it is Eli, Eli calling him, so he rushes to Eli, and Eli sends him back to bed. This happens three times before Eli discerns that it must be God calling him. So Eli the elder instructs the boy how to respond. Samuel returns to the room with the ark. He hears his voice once again and replies, speak Lord, your servant is listening. What Samuel hears from God is horrible news. Eli's sons have been bad priests, making themselves rich on the sacrifices to the temple. And so God is going to punish Eli for turning a blind eye and his house and his children for their iniquity. It will be an end to Eli's authority. The second story we hear today about the call of Nathanael is slightly out of context. It's being abbreviated. The Gospel of John begins with the prologue, in the beginning was the word, then moves directly to John the baptizer, witnessing to who Jesus is. So as in the story about Samuel, we have an elder, John, identifying the word of God, Jesus. Like Eli instructing, instructing Samuel, John tells his followers to go after Jesus, the Lamb of God. Andrew then fetches his brother Peter and also to follow Jesus. Philip is from the same city as Andrew and Peter. So we're given to understand that when Jesus calls on Philip, Philip has already heard some things and now is hearing for himself. And it's Philip who fetches Nathaniel. 
In these two call sequences, we learn the importance of elders who themselves do not hear the new call, but they are able to instruct the next generation on how to identify the call and, once, and what to do once they've heard it. How do we identify the call? And how do we respond? In the story of Samuel, God's call is persistent. Again and again, Samuel hears the voice until he responds properly. I wonder if that means when something is nagging at us, we should probably attend to it. I was just talking about the PJP, the Pacific Jubilee program that I completed last April, April, May, uh, in uh, spiritual accompaniment, the, the application for that program for the PJP had been sitting on the corner of my desk for 20 years. The application just kept resurfacing whenever I was looking for work or whenever I was experiencing a lot of grief or doing a lot of personal soul searching, there was the application. So I finally spent the money and did the program because it just kept coming back to me. God's call is persistent. In each instance, these two stories, names are important. Each follower is called by name. In the gospel, Jesus ju doesn't just know names, but he knows little details about the lives of the would-be disciples. God's call is deeply personal and specific. In seminary, we used to joke about the person on stage pointing out to the audience and saying, you, and everyone in the audience would turn around to see to whom the speaker was speaking. We don't do that when God is calling or Jesus is calling. When God is talking to us, there is no doubt about to whom God is speaking. My personal experience informs me that it's often also an oh crap moment. Oh, that's me. That's my mess. Or that's my job. Or that's my story. It would be my hope that Every once in a while, while I'm blah, blah, blahing away, you experience an, oh, that's my story. I know exactly what that's like. Oh, I get that. That is so true. I hope that happens. I can't control that, of course, because when you're feeling that, it isn't just me speaking anymore, but the holy in me has touched the holy in you. Thanks be to God. So two qualities by which we can identify God's call. God's call is persistent and God's call is personal and specific. One more quality I would draw from these two stories is that in hearing God's call, we will likely hear something we don't want to hear or something we don't expect. Samuel hears and ex expected to deliver horrible news about his beloved teacher, Eli. Unlike certain political leaders in the South, Eli is exceptionally gracious about receiving the news about the end of his authority because he's at least self-aware enough to know it is the truth. Andrew and Peter and Philip and Nathaniel, on the other hand, have no idea what they're in for. With a little help from John, they've heard the call and they've responded, but they have no idea what's to come. In fact, Jesus says, 
You think the fact that I could identify you is reason to follow me. Well, just you wait. You will see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. They have no idea what they've gotten themselves into. Shakespeare says, there's more in heaven and hell than is spoken of in your philosophy. My personal experience in hearing and responding to God's call is that the path will be both worse than you're anticipating and better than you're anticipating. The darkness that we will encounter on the road with Christ is so much darker than we can possibly anticipate. Good Friday is bleak. But the resurrection is also well beyond what we can readily imagine. I would argue that I have no idea what the eternal embrace of God is like, but I have glimpsed it and I know it's worth it. And I know that you too have had glimpses of God's eternal embrace and you too know that whatever God asks of us, it's worth it. So from our stories today, we've learned three things about God's call. God's call is persistent. God's call is deeply personal. And God's call is unexpected, both worse and better than we could anticipate. As we journey through a very dark passage in Western history, in world history, illness, injustice, insurrection, and chaos, we follow the one who calls us. We obey the one who calls us. We seek justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. And we will know God's eternal embrace. As we walk through great darkness, may our hearts be open to God's call, open to following Christ's way, and open to receiving God's eternal embrace. Amen.